So after a year of, of battering the old filter on the shop vac, I've uh, finally got a replacement, so it should perform a bit better now. But I'm um, fitting the plaster board now, which will fill in this patch here. There's a timber that runs through this wall anyway, so I've got a fixing point there. And I haven't got any, um, I can't dot and dab it, it's late at night now, I haven't got anything to do that with. Um, but I have got some uh, contract type adhesive, I can put that on there. I've PVA some of the brick as well to make sure we've got good adhesion. I've been put a couple of uh, fixings into the brick as well. So. in this area here but in order to do that I need to bring out the frame uh, the door frame by 12 mil and that's uh, the case on the side as well because there's a lip so that way we can plaster up to it flush so I'll get this one in first I think and also by doing this I'm actually hiding or disguising the um, the track system for the bifold door because that was a pretty uh, ugly thing to look at. Now we'll get a spirit level on there. So what was quite a simple job has just got a little bit worse because this section up here had two strips of bell wire or security cable going through and as soon as I pulled it, the whole of that fell off. But we'll get this on. I'll just seal it off now so that in the morning when I get up I can uh, get straight onto it. Okay, final little wrap up before I head off to bed. Uh, so we've got the patched area up there. What's wrong, dog? The boarding down there where the plaster is coming away. Uh, here, just got off cups of plasterboard that I had left over from the last job and I've used nine and a half mil plasterboard here to bring it up almost flush and I'm going to I've PVA'd around it as well so in the morning I can put some bonding around that. Right I think I need to give the dog some counselling. So I've got loads of patching to do around the place. Some of it I can use bonding or backing plaster to fill. Um, but some of the larger areas I'm fitting a little bit of plasterboard there and here is one of those areas and I know exactly what's happened here although there's always a bit of spring in the wall with the lathe and plaster wall here there's a bump and I'm almost certain that's where the electricians have put the box in for the light switch in the other room and it's pushed it out and as soon as you disturb one small area it kind of gets worse and worse so you don't have to do perfectly level lines. I just find that if you do that it's a lot easier when you come to cut the board to fit in there. It's tempting to take out more than you need to because there's always going to be a little bit of spring. But when you take it out you really need to do it as carefully as possible because um, otherwise you just end up disrupting more and more and more and we're going to be plastering it in anyway so it should hold it tight. And you could use a sharp blade, but it will just get blunt very quickly. So I'm just using a scraper. Tend to spray down a little bit of water as you go. Just kind of cut down the dust a little bit. Right, my measurements on here. And don't get me wrong, this is certainly not a conservation way to go. This is more your DIY or you know renovation way to go. If you were uh, in a listed building or some uh, very old conservation project, then of course you would want to stick to using lime. 
and if you're on an outside wall, an exterior wall, that's another reason why you don't really want to be using plasterboard. And check it for size. Like I said, this is ideal because it means we can skim in, you know, if there's a little bit of a gap there because um, I really want to make sure there's a smooth transition so I use some bonding to, uh, to smooth that out. Put a couple in on these studs. Good. There's a few more screws than you'd ordinarily use. Alright, so there's one patch down. I've got another seven or eight to do. Okay, back from a quick break. Also, I'd just go and do a photo shoot quickly. Uh, so I am... Um, that's better. I am uh, doing pretty well prepping the walls for the backing plaster. Um, every every time I chip away at something, it's creating more problems, as you see. But I'll give you a quick look around now. I'm hoping that by the end of uh, this afternoon, I'll have all the patching finished and that we can get the understairs all boarded out as well. Dog and cat are a bit confused. You don't know what's going on, do you? We would have thought they'd get used to it by now. So now I've finished all that prep work, I need to PVA all the walls to seal them. And I've also gone over, I had some sugar soap in the, uh, in the garage, so I've actually washed down all these walls to try and get rid of some of that residue from the wallpaper uh, adhesive. And most of that seems to be off now, so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Oh. Seems to spend most of the weekend cleaning up and sweeping, but um, I'm now at a point where I can mix up some bonding. And actually, first thing I need to do is PVA. So we'll go and mix up some PVA, and I'm just gonna anywhere I need to patch, just seal that. I just want to make sure that the water in the plaster doesn't get sucked out too uh, too easily. So I watered down some PVA first. I'll just give us a good seal. It will dry super quick because it's obviously lime is uh, great at sucking the water out. So any time that water is applied within seconds, it'll suck it up and that will just leave us with a almost like a varnished, you know, sealed um, finish. So any of these little cracks, I'm just going to seal. Now over here, I think I'll just use bonding in there. Um, that should be fine. I'm going to put a strip of plasterboard along the bottom there. So I've finished downstairs now, um, plastering the patching. And I'm just on my way up here now. Not ideal. I can't find my plus the uh, mixer from a plaster bucket. Can't find the large trowel, but we're making do. As well as filling the holes, just making sure we haven't got any big steps because the top skim is only going to be about probably three mil at most. So if we can smooth everything out with the bonding first, that should help. As you can tell, I'm not a plasterer. I have ended up scrim taping the joins because I think that's gonna give it a little bit more strength if I put it on now with the bonding rather than just with the uh, top coat. Some bonding mix up. You can make it a bit thicker than what I've got here. Uh, but that should go on fine. Uh, unfortunately, I've got the really small trowel here, so uh, it's not going to be ideal. But uh, we should be able to get a good enough finish on this. want to make sure that when we skim everything, that it's going to blend in. So the reason I'm doing all this repair work myself rather than getting the plasterer to do it is because, well it's twofold really. One, he can only make 
he can only free up one day in the next few weeks and I really wanted to try and get this done, like you know. And two, if I can do absolutely everything myself beforehand, such as filling all the gaps, getting all the materials ready, PVA the wall, repair everything, cleaning down, put the dust sheets out, all that sort of stuff, there is a good chance that um, the plaster will be able to do the whole lot in a day. So that's a good little tip if you're trying to save a little bit of either money or time, is just to do all the really kind of menial stuff yourself and then um, let the skilled tradesmen just do the skilled bit. There's no point in paying a skilled tradesman to come and like sweep up and chip bits off walls and stuff like that. So it just makes, certainly in my mind, makes a lot more sense to do absolutely everything you can possibly yourself and then just use them for what they're really good at and then you can just make the tea. So it's the day before the plastering now, uh, a little bit behind as usual and uh, just managed to get the end of the stairs boarded up so that's ready. Now I've just got to do the final bit of prep and PVA the walls and then it's off to bed. So here's a quick stub wall I threw up under the stairs to bring it out to the same line as the solid wall that's here and then boarded the underside of the stairs. If we choose to use uh, tongue and groove paddling in the future we can do that straight over the top. All the plaster's ready there. We've also got some lime finishing plaster for the front wall there because that's an external wall. The rest is going to do it in gypsum. Finished off around that stained glass window. Just got to put a bit of corner bead on there and pretty much finished everywhere else. So I'll we'll slap up a load of PVA and that'll give the walls time to seal overnight ready for tomorrow's plastering. So that's it, final whistle, half eleven, and I think we're there. Give you a quick look around, nothing much changed, um, but we should be ready now for the guys to come in. First thing, they're coming at 7am, and the two of them should be able to get the whole thing skimmed in the day. Moved all the plaster over to this side. All that's needed now is just some scrim tape over the joins, but I'll wait till the morning. Uh, just so it doesn't start peeling off overnight. See so there's a bit of a sheen on the wall now, that's from the PVA sealing it off. So it's uh, it's nice and kind of a sealed finish now, nothing dusty or anything loose. And then just before they skim, they'll put like a, coat, a tacky coat on as well to help the adhesion. Where there was this old bit of trim here, I've actually trimmed out the whole of the front door with some 12 mil ply, so it gives them something to plaster up to. And then we can paint this as well when we do all the rest of the woodwork. And we'll probably put a slim architrave around the door. The only limiting factor is this switch is quite close. So it'll have to be quite a thin moulding. But it's just meant that I can use some packers here and uh, make sure this is nice and vertical. So it's just gone half six and uh, just need to get a few more, few more things done. The guy's going to be here at seven, so just a little bit of corner bead to do and a bit of general tidy up and then we'll be ready. Who's that? Hi, what's going on? Oh, you're getting your breakfast? <laughs> So we were away for the whole of the day yesterday and it was really good to come back and find everything all finished. 
What do you have for breakfast? Um, banana. Banana? Yeah. Nice. Do you want to show me the new walls? Are they smooth? Yeah. I want to feel it. Yeah. They're all favorite. Mmm. Yeah, all day long. That, that, not, not that. So now I ended up with these really nice smooth walls. Yeah. Right up to... Yeah, well, they've capped off the top. The one small wall remaining is this front wall and I wanted to use a lime base, well a breathable plaster for that. Uh, the guys didn't have time for that yesterday uh, and I kind of sprung that on them because I only picked it up the day before so um, I said just leave it well alone, don't PVA it and I, I would do it myself. So all I'm going to do is just key the surface and we've done it in the other rooms where instead of using PVA we've just kind of wetted down the wall slightly to stop the suction and and then put a coat on and it's been absolutely fine. Actually that's how we've done the whole of that outside stretch over there with this same plaster. And right down the bottom there I did put a little bit of bonding in before I really thought about it but um, it's a tiny tiny bit there so I'm going to leave that there and then we'll just lime, we'll use the limelight over the whole of that. So that's the first coat on, just really to flatten out, a bit of a rough coat. And we'll give it 20, 30 minutes maybe, just so it firms up a bit. Which it's doing already actually. Um, got a second mix down here, which is a little bit looser. And that'll give us our, uh, hopefully, smooth finish. Not too high. 